Good morning, students. Myself, Dr. Nilima Bhardwaj, Associate Professor in Botany, Government College, Kota. This topic is for MSc Sem three students of Botany. Dear students, before discussing with the development of bryophytes, particularly the uh, sporophyte. we will discuss about the progressive sterilization of the sporogenous tissue in bryophytes it is quite interesting there is an increased amount of sterilization and this increases the capacity of the adaptation of the plants to the terrestrial habitat for example rickshia has insignificant and negligible amount of sterile cells which is the beginning point of sterilization rickshia is the member of the class hepatic opsida which is the primitive class of the bryophytes and ending with funaria which is the member of the class brapsida where the sterile cells are increased and the fertile cells are insig insignificant in amount so we can say rickshia and funaria are the two extreme examples of the progressive sterilization of the sporogenous tissues in bryophytes it is seen as a progressive conversion of simple forms of marken shells to complex forms of bryles the simple type of sporogonium which is seen in rickshia here it divides periclanally at an early stage of 20 to 30 cell embryo and produces outer amphitheism and inner endotheism the whole of the endotheism develops into sporogenous cells while the amphitheism forms a protective jacket layer thus most of the part of the sporogonium is produced produces spores and the amount of sterile cells that is the jacket layer is almost negligible but sometimes some cells become converted into nurse cells and take the nutritive function in rickshia the elaters are absent and the nurse cells which are very few in number are considered as the forerunners of the elaters in the higher members of the bryophytes coming to sphenocarpus the nurse cells are well established and in targonia half of the sporogenous cells get converted into spores and the rest half into elaters the which is the sterile cells the course of evolution passing through them reaches to markensia we can say markensia is much advanced in that the zygote divides transversely to form a lower hypobasal cell and an upper epibasal cell the foot and seta which is the sterile part of the sporogonium develop from the hypobasal cell whereas the capsule develops from the epibasal cell thus we can say half of the embryo produces sterile cells directly and does not contribute to the spore producing cells whereas the rest half contributes to the capsule very soon the capsular portion differentiates into the amphitheism and endotheism the amphitheism produces one cell thick protective sterile jacket layer and the endotheism produces the spores as well as elaters elaters are present in are present in markensia but they are absent in rickshia thus the foot seta jacket layer and large number of elaters are the sterile cells pelia represents a still more elaborated form showing further progress in the sterilization of these sporogenous tissues 
the zygote divides transversely into two cells of which the lower cell does not contribute to the embryo the upper cell divides transversely and gives rise to the fourth seta and upper cell to the capsule thus the three four part of the tissue is completely sterilized in capsule the sterile cells are jacket cells elaters and elatophore the elatophore which is a massive sterile tissue is found attached at the base of the capsule the presence of elatophore leaves a clue to the beginning of columella which comes from the members of the class anthocytopsida in frullenia besides foot seta and sterile jacket cells almost half of the cells of the capsule develop into elaters and elatophore and half into spores among the members of anthocytotales the sterilization proceeds ahead to that of palea and frullenia where only one third portion of the tissues differentiates into capsule and only a smaller portion of the capsule is fertile in capsule the amphitheism divides periclinally forming outer jacket of the capsule and the inner archisporal tissue which is entirely divides periclinally forming the endotheism so this point the amphitheism giving rise to the archisporal tissue is entirely different from that of the members of the hepatic opsida it is derived from amphitheism the whole of endotheism develops into sterile cells called columella so in anthocytos the sterile tissues are bulbous put several layers of capsule wall central columella and pseudo elaters here again pseudo elaters take the place of elaters found in the members of marcantia the outermost layer shows marked advancement the jacket is more than one cell thick and differentiates into outermost layer the epidermis which possesses the chlorophyll and stomata are also present in the epidermis in sphagnum which is the member of the brapsida first there is formed a 5 to 12 cell filamentous embryo of which few upper cells develop into capsule while middle cells form foot and seta the lower portion of the filament forms hostorium in capsule whole endothelium develops into the columella which is similar to the uh, members of the anthocytopsida members whereas amphitheism divides to produce outer sterile jacket and inner archisporium that is the sporogenous cells the sporogenous cells arch over the columella and are arranged in 2 to 4 layers that is only a very little portion of the capsule forms the spores in fineria which is the extreme member the sterilization reaches to its peak where the major portion of the capsule is much more complex and sterilized the seta is well developed with ill defined internal differentiation in cell size the capsule consists of several well developed sterile regions such as operculum peristome apophysis columella capsule wall of chlorophyllous cells and epidermis with stomata so to conclude the increased amount of sterilization increases the capacity of adaptation to the terrestrial habitat of the plants in bryophytes rickia with insignificant and negligible sterile cells is the beginning point of sterilization which culminates into fineria where fertile cells are insignificant in amount thus we can say rickia and fineria are the two extreme examples in our next lecture we will be discussing the development of the sporophyte in bryophytes taking rickia as an example thank you so much